What did you lose on that day? I... I don't know. Okay. What form did your loss take? And how will you come to terms with it? Will you face your trouble and confront her life? So cryptic. Or... Will you throw yourself at infinity for the impossible forevermore? Don't call me out there. Welcome to the Dustbreaker setup process. Press enter to continue. This industrialization process will ask you nine questions. Please answer truthfully. How do I... Do I arrow keys? Okay, I arrow keys. We'll just go with this. There's, there's, there's a Y somewhere, I swear. Uh, uh, uh. We'll just go with this. Yes, it's okay. Um... How do I select? Okay. And enter. If someone you care about that with a great misfortune, it will be your first action. Well, if you try to focus on their happiness, they're probably still suffering, so you probably want to understand them more. Um. I internalize it because I'm a terrible person. <laughs> You hurt by a friend on purpose, how would you confront them afterwards? Try to talk it out. If you and someone you cared about both got hurt at the same time, whose happiness will you prioritize? I... I will never be happy. If someone you didn't do not know got hurt, would you care about their well-being? No. If someone that has hurt you in the past got hurt themselves, do they deserve it? It depends on the level of hurt. If they stubbed their toe, I guess they did. If they got, you know, their arm sliced off? No, not really. Um... Now I think. How many people have hurt me in the past? Do any of them deserve to get their arm sliced off? No. They, they, probably, they probably didn't deserve it. If you witness someone you dislike getting ganged up on, would you join in? It's not my problem. <laughs> Your answers have been recorded. Gee, thanks! So ominous. Please remain stationary with the DB helmets attached. You will experience a moment of discomfort. Do not be alarmed, it will last for only 15 seconds. So, how's the weather? Doing good? It's, uh... It's kind of raining outside. Maybe. I'm not sure. It's supposed to be every now and then. I don't really know. Oh, I was, I was supposed to press enter. Despite the circumstances, everything feels cold. I feel like I'm falling endlessly through a space my brain could never begin to comprehend. And when I open my eyes, I can see something beautiful. Something that transcends what we can process with our human minds. An aurora of ideas, all intermingling with each other. Ideas of happiness, ideas of excitement, ideas of sorrow, and ideas of anger. In this space, there are no bodies or minds to interpret these ideas, only the space and the ideas themselves. And yet, just as I plunge further through this unknowable space, I reach out with what remains of my mind and... Cool! Tanegashima Precinct. Not by any means, a bustling hub of officers and investigators coming in and out through the day, but a humble shack that services what the island needs from its police force. Due to its lack of vivid activity, the detectives and other officers often revel here in the peace when taking breaks. Today, however, is no such day. I walked up the road to the police center. Even from a short distance, I wouldn't really blame anyone for missing it completely. Ah, the Tanegashima precinct. That always catches me off guard when I remember how small it really is. 
I walked up the small porch to the door and knocked on it. A few seconds passed, but there didn't seem to be any response. Uh, okay. I knocked again. This yielded the same results. Frustratingly, it also did on the third try. And the fourth. For real, I find it really hard to believe there's nobody inside. Stepping off the porch, I looked around. Maybe I'll find someone by looking through the window. That's called peeping. I walked up to it and pressed my cheek against the dirty glass. Really? Sure enough, I couldn't see anyone inside. Not even the clerk at the reception desk. I mean, okay, think about it. It's a Monday. Maybe everybody partied too hard on the weekend and nobody showed? Or maybe they're all out looking for Suki. That's probably it. I knew I could count on the professionals in the pinch. I mean, that's probably not it, but I'll have hope. God knows I need it in this kind of situation. I walked back up on the porch and looked at the door again. Well, the sign says they're still open, so I guess they expect me to just try the door. I twisted the rusted handle on the door, and sure enough, it opened without any trouble at all. Ah. Well, not like there's much use standing out around here. In I go. Just as I saw through the window, there wasn't a soul to be found in the reception area. The ambience really doesn't really tell us that, but sure. There really is a no-show here. But the moment I said that, I noticed a detective down the hall. I waved to her and she looked up from the paper she was scanning. Oh, ma'am? Uh, hey, um, excuse me? Is there anyone I can talk to to follow up on a missing persons report? Truth be told, there were a lot of other words I would like to say. Staying strong and formal is far from my strong suit. But I don't exactly think it's a super good idea to be on the bad side of the police. The detective, who isn't even in any kind of uniform, points to a cubicle in the back of the hall and walks off. Oh, um, thank you. I walked down the hall and peeked around the corner of the cubicle. Cute. Sitting down behind it is a woman in a coach, writing something down on a notepad and she looks at one of her screens. Hey, Miss Detective, are you free at the moment? I have a few questions I'd like to ask about. Uh, this report I followed? I have it in my binder here somewhere. Where did I actually put the damn thing? I started scrambling through my files desperately. The detective looked up from her screen. She seemed a bit confused. Uh, kid, I don't think you can just... Ah, found it. I pulled the piece of paper out of the binder and handed it to her. Here we are. I've got the details in this. Or if you need to do, like, a lookup or something, or... I can give you her name or something? The detective sighed and looked at me disapprovingly. Save it. You're here about Suki, right? Not many missing persons reports around here, so this is the first one in a couple of weeks. Yeah, yes Suki Tasso got it. That's her. What's the report? Nothing since we opened the investigation. I frowned. No, nothing. It, it's been a day. You have to have found at least something. It, it's been less than a day. A girl goes missing and you expect us to mobilize our entire force to find her. We barely have any resources as is. I mean, I, I don't want you to do that. I just thought you might have made some progress or something. I don't know. And the detective sighs again. <laughs> well, we have it. We'll let you know if we find her. Until then, why don't you relax? There's nothing you can do. No use worrying about something you can't control. Oh, for the love of... Despite her efforts to calm me down, she was clearly unaware of the inverse effect it was having. Well, well fine then. I'll do it myself. I'll find her and, and I'll prove to you that you can do better. This you had another sigh from the detective. As there should be. Listen, kid. I understand your worries, but if you go and break any laws or get yourself into danger, we aren't going to protect you because of an emotional outburst. The last thing we want to do is find your sister and have to tell her we had to lock you up, understand? Before the detective was even finished with her sentence, however, I was already on my way out the door. Jeez, what a piece of work. Once I got back outside, I sat down on the porch and tried to calm myself down. Not too much avail. I should message Allison and let her know how it went. God damn it. Did not go well. Yeah, I'd say so. They have nothing. Literally. Well, it's only been a day or so. Man, not you two.
There's a whole ass day's worth of opportunity for her to kick the bucket somehow. Sad. What, what are you trying to do? Is that even a question? I'm finding her. Since obviously they aren't. Oh, well, now. I really don't think that's the best idea. Come on, I'll take like no time at all. At least help me hang up missing posters for it or something. I wanted to help you do that, but I don't want you to get involved in anything further than that, okay? Tiki needs her sister to come home too. Yeah, 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 I get it. I'll be fine. I'm gonna go back to the park. Can you meet me there? Yes, I can. I'm nearby, actually. I'll see you there, okay? Until then, try to stay calm. I am calm. Seriously. You've never seen anyone as calm as I am right now. The park is still a good bit of way, but ugh, I'm not walking that distance in this weather. When does the next bus come? I checked on my phone. Ten minutes at the nearest stop. Thank God. Public transport. I put away my phone, got up off the precinct porch, and started walking towards the bus stop. Hajimel Lee. Skywork uh, Sky Outworks. Team Vivid Status. Epilepsy warning! Be careful, everybody! I like how they immediately start off with, you know, what would need an epilepsy warning. Thank you. Read the user manual before playing the game. This is a rhythm game. A mystery rhythm game. What is this? What is any of this? What does this mean? I should figure out what the controls are first. That, that's that's my assumption. User manual. It opened up a PDF. I'm impressed. Here's the user manual. There's. It's. I'm amazed. I. I'm just amazed. Yes, we are already on the user manual. There's visual offset. There's songs to be worried about. There's technical song stats. This is very specific. This is more specific than I ever see in the rhythm game. Interesting. There's top display. There's points and battery. Oh my god. There's grinding? <laughs> There's ultimate style. You have to full combo, you die. Oh no. God. There's optional fourth difficulty. So basically advanced in most games. This is what it looks like. Bar skin downward scroll. There's chip. There's bumper. Oh! It's just two lanes. Okay. There's different gauges. Um, that's health. There's course mode. Oh god, they have good rage. God, that's always pain. Oh my god! Energy Matrix? Miyuki songs? There's... This... There's node flow chart. It's a story. Oh my god. It's a visual novel! Yay! Okay, time to get my butt kicked. System options first. Whoops, that's not it. System options. Give me system options. I need to know. Now we can full screen with- What is that? What? I guess we're playing a window. Cool. Thanks. Thank you so much. FPS target. I'm not a pro, so I don't care. It's autoplay. It's quick restart. Sure. Note sound and hold ticks. 
No. Sure. Sure. What does this mean? Sure. What the? Why the heck not? Oh, wait. No, we wanted that. What does this mean? Why are there so many things? No. What is this? Huh? Yes, like a normal human being. So I guess we're supposed to like earn our way up. Will this kill me? We need to know this. Sure. I just need to know, will this kill me? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm panicking. This is stress right now! Oh god! Honestly, I prefer hitting uh, that one place as a jack instead of switching fingers. Oops! I let go. When does it end? any of that mean I failed one I can't even read the entire I can't even read all of the, the things down there but that's okay is there any way to move this window up a bit no it's just gonna keep snapping I, I want to see the rest of the window please I guess I don't Oh, Windows, you terrible, terrible system. Now we know. I... In terms of this game, I don't suck enough. I don't suck enough to be bad at it. I'm reminded of Toho. Let's not question why. It's, it's just a hat. Can I afford any of this? Wait. Is this, this just default? Let's let Rhythm play them. What's that song they gave me earlier? What? I'm confused.
Wait, nope. That's not what I wanted. Exit the flowchart. What is 10D? Cool, I unlocked a node on the node and we'll never get to read the rest of that. Cool. I don't have enough batteries. Okay. What's that song earlier? Where did it go? Hmm. Just go with all songs. This is going to kill me. This is also going to- I, 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 I think it's options. This is actual murder. You are- This is actual murder. Holy shoot. It's- It's now. So now I know I can play level 8. Um... Are they going to do like funny things with this with the with the effects? I, I I want to know. This is totally this isn't this is a terrible decision. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, what? This is scary. I'm gonna die soon. I can feel it. Is this an extended version? It is. Or at least I think it's extended. Am I losing inputs? Oh, because I keep letting go by, by accident. Oops. Sorry. That's that's just a habit. Oops. I play Muse Dash every now and then. It, it's gonna end soon, I swear. My my pain, my pain. We do get enough. We get we get more points for this. We get more points. I think. Am I stupid? Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Maybe I'm stupid. We have a hundred points. Wait, we got a hundred points. Is, is this more? Am I stupid? Well, no, we got to figure out what's the earning rate on this. Hmm. Cause I suck at this. Well, like, 
But also I can play 12s apparently. That, that, that's a good thing. Hmm. I need to I need to draw the cost benefit. It's fine, we'll just play all the songs. And then we'll actually get back to the story. I'm so sorry. You can skip ahead if you want. I'm just having the fun. I'm just having a fun time. I like how they have the PV in the background. That's nice. If you're, if you're wondering, I suck at the one, two, uh, three, fours, uh, doubles. It, 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 they're not good. They just, I just, I'm just bad at them. Dang it. That shield caught me. this again feels a lot more relaxing than earlier what the heck information alone is not enough we also need the meaning of that information oh, and there's actual subtitles what we did we get more battery points I feel like we got more battery points. I, I, I'm not sure. We got less P points, whatever that means. If I point this on... Oh, no wonder. Whoops! Actually, it's just a level 10. Eh, leave it alone. Good samples. I like dying. Let's do this. That's not a good sign. For my survival. Starting off with that, terrifying. I'm just trying to survive, man. What? That was really bent. No, this is probably gonna kill me. I'm sorry. I suck. I freaking play this easy. Too bad I'm not my friend.
Why would you do this? Why would you do this? Now no, that was that was really painful. I'm a 13. Oh god. It came back. It came back. It's coming back. Everything's coming back. Everything. Let go. Am I dead? I feel like I should be dead. That performance, I should be dead. As you can see here, the points are lower because that I was bad. That's very really bad. That's very really bad. Yeah, that, that's pretty bad. Let's just not play that. that, that's painful. Interesting. My heart wants to play this. I know I cannot. Look at the note count. It has higher. It's also faster minor. By a minor bit. Hey, I like suffering. Let's do this. It, it's 12, it's not 13. There's, there's slightly more hope <laughs> uh, is shrine report a reference to toho Yay! Calm section. Die sucker. I'm out. Oops, got to hit that. Everything's coming at me really hard. I'm so bad at this. We got more, we got more points, but we got less battery. I'll never understand this. It's just his middle. Cause this this was this was a mid play. Let's find good song to farm. Gotta figure out cost benefit ratios. This might be good. This might be easy. 
Pas PNAD ça. C'est un Pycros. Sample section. I didn't really know how to deal with that section, my bad. It's kind of bad. Some of this was worse. Just random tricky rhythms in there. What can I find? Gotta figure it out. I don't really like this song. Sounds like it's gonna kick my butt. Don't want to get kicked in the face right now. Sure, why not? Let's get kicked. Also, just realized, it kind of reminds you of Twitch. That that screen.
Hold up. To my death. I missed that. I'm so disappointed in myself right now. That was a sucky play. Okay. Did get enough point for it. Oh, I'm getting our AAs. A days. Clearly, you know what my, my my plan here is obviously. We figure out what is the easiest 12. But I really don't want to play this either. Alright, we have to double A this. By the triple A's? You should be sitting up straight. And should feel comfortable. I feel like I'm being Don't called out right now. Am I relaxed? I don't know. Not really. Oops. It came back. Sample. It's it, it kind of long, the song. That, that... Using proper rhythm, proper rhythm. Wiggle your fingers and jam that kind of knocks it down in terms of efficiency in my eyes. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Goes down. In terms of efficiency. It's an S! Wow! Using proper rhythm, proper rhythm. No, I didn't actually pay attention to what it said. You know, this is kind of long. I don't know if I really want to farm this. It, it's too long. It's long. I don't want to farm it. We know we can get S plus on eight. An S's on 11 pluses. So maybe the ultimate farm would be a 10. We also need the meaning of that information. Wise words. It's an S plus.
This is not some... Well, what did we get dirty battery off of earlier? What? This ain't good enough, bro. It's time we play this song. Every single time, this kicks me in the butt in every, every game I've encountered it. Oh my god. Oops, let go. Keeps going. It's an A, cause I suck. Oh my god, it's Taro Nuke. Was, was not ITG not enough for you?
What is scroll.txt? I feel like I just got trolled for the entirety of that. What the heck? Ugh, emotion of damage. Dude, I just got trolled. What? Does this mean we can get new songs now? Seriously, this character reminds you of Toho. It's just a hat. It's just a hat. I don't know what's getting selected. Not completely sure. Why would you? Ugh. Fifteen thousand. So oh, it's random. I like that song. It's just ah, uh... no, it's upside down A by ah. Uh... I wish we could preview this song. I said it should by huh? Never heard of it. There's an anime girl on there. There's energy tricks. Oh god, not that song. That's your credit. Never heard of this, but it's Nebby Mayo song. Is it specifically for this? Maybe? Because I've never heard of it before. Good Rage. Do not do not play Good Rage unless you hate yourself. Picture perfect by from. Nice. Hey look, it's Camellia. It's Terabyte Connection. That's you must hate yourself. Question becomes oh wait there's tab for preview I'm stupid Sounds like a great song to punch me in the face Why are these so expensive? I want to hear my connection. We're going to play one more song and then, uh, of course we'll do. Can I do this? I believe we played some of these songs already. Does this give me any points? Why is this so what? Nice trumpets. Oops. I didn't let go.
I'm just failing right now. Oh my god. Please tell me that's the end of the song. Yikes. It's like it's like the recollection gauge in, in Archaea. Double A because I suck. Oh god. The sign up by Timid. I'm Timid. Entering this. Oops. Grace notes. At least that's what I'm gonna call them. There's almost some ice cream. Oh my god, this is complicated. I'm flailing, I'm dead. It was the song that I knew I wouldn't be able to pass. Yay. Got a class, you got, you got a, we, we got to pass like one of these courses. I swear, we have to. God, I'll settle for the, the, the slightly lower one. My only real experience with like keyboard rhythm games is just Mew Dash, so that really tells a lot. It, it means I suck at rhythm games on keyboard, obviously. But I play a lot of like uh, mobile ones. Some player, so I'm bad at keyboard. have like some experience with piano a long time ago. <laughs> it's been years, so obviously I suck. There's no way any of this was gonna go right.
Fitness Plus. Also, we get points for this. Yeah. Get points for doing these courses. Anyways. This is again. Credits. Such a great song. Was it always here? Sounds different. I don't think I've heard these sims before. Gross. What? Okay. I just say credits question mark. What? Arcaea version of this makes me sad. The, the Arcaea future chart makes me sad. It hurts my hands. I'm just being a little bit bad. It won't kill me. I think. Yeah, I already have the break section. I need to stay at the top of the beat. It's gonna come back soon. To the main section. Oh, I know. The simp. Antagonizing simp. How I see this in my mind. This is the antagonizing sim. It just antagonizes you. Oops. Is that antagonizing me? No.
Eh? Dang, I suck. Sounds really familiar. She's like a chiptune remix or something. Build up or something. When needs to drop. Is this true trip tune? I think we're gonna get beat you on my I think we're gonna get on my butt if I ask that. Oh, that was it. So, clearly, we, I just need to get good enough to do this. Then I can flex on people. But that's how things work, right? I'm not good. I'm only mid. Cool. Now we have a class. Dead. This also means I can now purchase the song I wanted. Yes. I beelined to expensive. We're not even gonna go to like other good songs like credits or I don't know what else was there. And this was cool. Random, super good. No. Fully auto buster is cool. Energy Synergy Matrix. Like I said, no. We're gonna beeline to Camellia. Oh yeah! <laughs> uh, 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 oh god. That's cool. And now we're gonna play it and die. Why is it here? What question? Why is it just not like... Sort of a difficulty. It's like a normal human being. This is too hard. We're gonna play it at 11. Don't worry about that. Now. 
Unexpected Jax. that It's almost there. We're almost to the chill section. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry this is a long song. I how long this was. Oops. I shouldn't have been messing around. My bad. <laughs> you saw nothing! It's a double A. It's fine. Now back to the actual game. The Tanegashima Park, a humble but popular attraction on the island for the locals to stop by and hang out at on particularly sunny days. Once I got there, I went and stood in the northeast corner of it, next to a modest garden. I only should be in here like five minutes, so I'm probably good to sit down for a bit. I waited for a few minutes and looked around. A gardener volunteer is tending to the flowers in the garden boxes, but I'm not paying much attention to that. Some kids are playing and shouting on the playground in annoyingly loud voices, which I guess makes sense considering that it's a playground, but I still wish I didn't have to hear it. Eventually, my patient starts running sin. What the hell is she? It's been like 10 minutes. Can't take her that long. She said she was nearby, right? She hasn't texted back in a while, should I? Hey. Yeah, oh hi, oh, 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 hello. Oh, sorry, you, you scared me. Allison laughs sheepishly. Was it really that funny? Sorry, yeah, I got held up on my way here. Allison Alistair, age 19. A kind-hearted but a relatively closed-off girl. A lot of people mistake her shyness for some dark backstory. But in reality, she just tries to avoid interaction. Around me, however, she's as bright and peppy as can be. Because she likes the reactions that you make. Clearly. Y yeah, it, um, it, it's okay. Just let me um, cut the knot again. I put my backpack on the bench and rubbish through it. Oh, damn it. Oh, oh, hold on. Just, just a minute. Hold on. Are those spreadsheets in the, in the binder? Who are you? Hey, hey, I can be organized when, it, when it's important. There we go. I find the sheet I was looking for and pull it out of the binder. Anyways, check this out. She leaves at 10 and she doesn't come back. That's weird, right? There's gotta be something there. What else do you know? Uh... I know where she works. Have you contacted her workplace and wrote down what everyone said happened on the 22nd? I frowned. Well... Saturday, how did you fill up a binder operating on so little information? And besides, are you sure cut out for this? It seems like... At that moment, however, I noticed something out of the corner of my eye and looked the opposite of Allison. Oh, well, that's odd. Look over there. Is that Kodomi? Alice inside. Saturday, I'd rather you didn't just brush off my... I ran across the park, waving my arms to try and get 
Kotomi's attention. Kotomi! I felt a little bad for leading Allison back there, but I heard other footsteps that indicated she was following me anyway. So it's probably all good. Oh yeah. Allison and I caught up with Kotomi in no time. She looked surprised to see us. Saturday, what are you doing here? Did you hear about Suki? Just that she met that just that she went missing. I saw a few of your messages in the group chat. Kotomi Nichibotsu Age 23. A young adult that hangs out with Saturday and Allison on occasion. She works at the Sunrise Foundation as a junior researcher. You'd think she would be the more responsible one of the trio, but that burden more often than not falls on Allison. Yeah, Saturday has this idea to try and investigate herself or something. I turned around and gave Allison a frustrated look. Grr, I'm angry. Of course I do. You don't see how that detective treated me. It's complete bullshit. You know what? I bet they have something to do with it. Honestly. Allison gave me her own frustrated look back. Not everything is a conspiracy. Get out of your bubble. Oops. Probably shouldn't have said that last part. You're just saying things now and you know it. Kotomi seems to find this banter amusing though and chuckles. Haha. <laughs> look at our youth. Thinking about conspiracies. It's not a bad idea to do a little digging yourself, to be fair. Allison looks at Kotomi with an almost tired expression. Don't encourage her. Next you know, she'll be solving mysteries in the van. You think so? Yeah, I do. I think it could be fun, honestly. And it's not like Saturday is going to be able to focus on anything else. Thank you, Kotomi. That's what I've been saying. Allison doesn't seem to share my feelings on the matter, though. Fun? It's not safe. I can't think of any hypothetical universe where it'd be safe. We have police for a reason, you know? I don't want you I don't want to see you two get hurt. Damn, I guess you're coming along to protect her then, huh? Since you're not gonna be able to stop her. No, I am not, in fact, going to do that. Neither of you are listening to me here at all. Oh you know I hate to do this. Oh Ow. Are, are you done? Oh. Allison sighs and shoots me at a defeated glance. Fine, fine, but we're not doing anything illegal. You're going to promise me that right now. No trespassing. And then they trespass. It's settled. Where are we investigating? Saturday. What? I said it's settled. Saturday, Tasso got it. She's doing that thing she does. Or she just traps onto you and doesn't let you move on until you agree to her condition. There's no use trying to get out of it once she gets like this. Fine, <laughs> promise. Are you happy? No, but it's the best I'm going to get out of you. So where are we going first? Her place of work is probably a good place to start. They have seen her last, so it's likely that they'll give us information as to when exactly she disappeared. That is, assuming she even showed up for work at all. Wait, you're coming along too? I have literally nothing to do, and besides, this was my idea. If I didn't come along and either of you got hurt, I'd never forgive myself. Well, I'm glad to have another eye to look out for dangerous situations at least. Saturday, where does your sister work? I don't think I ever even knew. She works at a geology place, I think. You know, rock stuff? I have to address on my phone. And you, we'd better get going. The bus only loops around once per hour, and that's on the other side of Tanegashima, near my place. Rightio, let's get a move on, folks. I marched off energetically towards the bus stop outside the park. Kotomi falls at a brisk pace, but Allison lags behind a bit. She's a shut-in, that's why. I wonder what's got her all down in the dumps. These are just songs. I'll get the I'll get the I got the songs on my own time, okay? Let's just unlock everything we can right now. Dang it, we're out!
workplace and investigation a reminder. The trio check up on the state of Suki's workplace. By the time we reach the Yali Museum, Alison seems to have perked up a bit. At least I'm guessing that from her walking in front of Kotomi and I. It looks like there's something going on. I don't think there'd normally be police officers outside the doorway. Suddenly I noticed something. Hey, wait! That woman talking to police officers! That's that detective that brushed me off! Huh? Wait, her? Saturday, that's... I start running up the road incline to the entrance. Kotomi and Allison's voices get quieter behind me. Hey, wait, you can't just run off to. By the time I've reached the entrance, the detective seems to have already noticed me. That doesn't look very happy about it, for obvious reasons. You don't think I've forgotten how you completely brushed me aside when I came and asked for progress? How dare you have the gal to then turn around and investigate? What made you suddenly care so much? Would you rather her not? Just so you're justified in your hatred of the police. The detective does not answer. She just keeps looking at me. What, are you bugging my phone or something? As soon as I say we should investigate here, you appear before us so you can take all the credit. Do you even care about saving her? Or are you just doing this so you can get a raise for cracking open the case or whatever? Saturday, enough. I hardly think that investigating her workplace is a novel idea. Why is she just doing this now? I have to get a permit. I can't just investigate places without the legal authority. There's a process. So bureaucracy is more important than my sister? Well, Maybe. If I don't want myself and my team to land in prison and leave no one left to investigate, yes. Saturday, if you're done, can you please stop harassing my sister? What? Wait, for real? I looked over at Kotomi, shocked, and also completely unaware of how to respond. Huh? What, what's that look for? What is it? I looked back to the detective and only just then noticed her name tag. Uh, your Eri Nichibotsu, Kotomi's sister. J Jesus Christ, Saturday, how did you not figure out that sooner? Holy hell, you are an awful friend. Kotomi seems just as shocked at my not knowing this information as I am at learning it. Jesus Christ, Saturday. How did you not figure that out sooner? I've talked about my sister at her line of work plenty of times. Uh, I know, I'm, no, I'm so sorry, Harry. This is it, this is the end. This is the curse of God. You're done. Every, you're probably done it now, Saturday. Harry seems almost amused, but just turned it around. I noticed her crack the world's smallest grin. Now, if you're done with this plot twist, I'm happy to let you accompany me inside. If you'll remain calm, you may even have some valuable insights. Immediately, however, Ari's attitude gets me frustrated again. Just from that? You're out of room. Why is Kotomi's sister so irritating? Fine. But only if you let Allison and Kotomi come, too. They're almost as close to Suki as I am, and I think they know some stuff I wouldn't. That's alright with me. Come along inside. You can show me where exactly your sister works, so I can skip having to figure out who inside would know. I walked inside with Kotomi and Allison following me. Kotomi still seems a bit shaken up by the fact that I may have inadvertently implied that I suspected her sister of having been involved while at the park earlier. No, she surely understands that I just didn't know. Kotomi is like super mega understanding. Yeah, sure, buddy. Once inside Suki's office, Allison, Kotomi, and I looked around to see if anything felt unusual. We're done collecting fingerprints, but still. Please try not to touch anything if possible. She said that, but I understood it to mean don't touch anything you don't need to for an investigation. Which was fine by me. Well, you don't have any gloves, so... Okay, this is her desk. It's got a computer, bought a bunch of rock stuff. I don't actually fully know what she does. She does something to do with environmentally friendly coal mining. I'm not sure about the specifics beyond that. You need to ask an employee here. Is that even possible? Because like burning coal is the problem. Environmentally friendly coal mining. You're still contributing to the problem by increasing the amount of coal. Cause coal produces CO2 or something, right? Is there anyone that your sister worked closely with? 
Mm, the only person I would have ever heard her mention was one specific co-worker that she relied on a lot when she was getting started. I think her name's, um, Jade? I'll go see if she's on call. I'll be back in a moment. Okay. But me leaves the room. Harry walks over and stands with us behind the desk. Do either of you know her computer password? Is our friend going to become a super hacker? Yeah, she uses the same one for everything. Hold on, let me just... I'll leave that type the password I remember into her laptop. Second shrine there. The screen lights up as it cuts from the dark, gloomy corporate lock screen to Suki's vibrant wallpaper. Got it. Gary sits down in Kotomi's chair and takes hold of her computer mouse, which bugs me a bit. But whatever, it's not like Suki's here. So let's see. It says here she will arrive for work on the morning of the 22nd. Is 10.30 really the morning? It's before noon, I'd say so. Right, you couldn't quite call it afternoon, but it's not like it was 8 or something. Morning is a bit misleading, isn't it? So she arrived at like mid-morning then? She arrived for work in the mid-morning on the 22nd and then clocked out for lunch at 1.35 and never came back. Just then, Kotomi's shape appears in the door again. So, Jade isn't on call right now, but I did get her on call. Kotomi holds up her cell phone. The room is filled with silence. Because, like, because cell phone on call. Fr friggin' whatever, man. Just introduce yourself, Jade. Hi, everyone. It really rocks to be here with you all. Can I hear one more godforsaken? Come on, why so stone-faced all of a sudden? I'm actually going to blow a fuse. Sorry, of course you would. I'll kill you! Allison leaps towards the door and cries to get off the phone. I haven't seen her this violent in a long time, but Allison really hates puns and stupid jokes. Also, why are you threatening to kill somebody in front of the police? Like, not even a corona move on way. Luckily, Kotobi stops Allison and she moves back to where she was. Anyways, Jade, did you want to tell us about what you and Suki did for a living? Thank you, oh my god! Oh, um, yeah, I'm a transfer from the U.S. branch of the Sunrise Foundation, since Suki's research mostly applies to North America. What does the Sunrise Foundation even do? Well, I guess more specifically, what does Suki do for work? She works on cleaning up old coal strip mines while mitigating environmental harm. It's a surprisingly difficult job that not many people bother doing. Yeah, because money! Did she do anything out of the ordinary on the day of her disappearance? Come to think of it, she did. She checked her texts while we were on lunch break and looked at some video. I asked her what was wrong, but she just shrugged it off. So you saw her after she clocked out? Yeah, we usually get lunch together. She told me not to wait up and that she'd be right behind me after taking care of something. Last I saw her, she was typing something on her phone while I left the building. Do you know who she was texting? I saw a text notification pop up at one point out of the corner of my eye. It wasn't a safe contact in their phone. I didn't really snoop or anything, though, so that's all I know. Thank you. Your help is valuable. Is there anything else you feel would be relevant to the case? No, nothing comes to mind. I did want to say something, though. Uh, Kotomi, can you pass the phone to Saturday? Ha, huh, me? Sure thing, yeah. Kotomi walks over and gives me the phone. Saturday? I'm so sorry all of this is happening and I'm here if you need to talk. I know we aren't super close, but I knew your sister pretty well and... Well, I just hope she's alright and I can't begin to imagine what you're going through. I know there's a potential tear making its way out of my eye, but I'll wipe it away before anyone else can notice. Not now, damn it! I keep it together though. Thank you, Jade. That means just a lot. Go to me. Cheer. I give Kotomi back her phone. Kotomi smiles at me, but I don't really register it. Kotomi hangs up the phone. I don't think she's hiding anything. It's obvious that she cares about Tsuki a lot. Now all that's left is finding out what that video she was watching was. I turn back towards the desk. Allison is looking through the things on Tsuki's computer. I don't see anything out of the ordinary on a computer. It's all files about works and stuff. Nothing really pops out. Check her browsing history. There may be something there. If she was watching some weird video, there's a possibility her browsing history is synced between her phone and her computer. I know a lot of modern cross-platform browsers do that. Huh, you may be onto something. There's a weird website here. CrimeReport.xyz. Let me open this. Allison opens the site. I walk over and take a look. 
It's just a video, nothing else. Seems to be. Let me look at the page source before I watch the video. Allison opens the page source for the strange sight. Sure enough, it seems to just be the blank HTML page with nothing but a video in the center. Nothing outside of the tags or anything. Okay, play the video. Yeah, got it. Cool. After we left the geology museum, we went to Allison's house. We didn't end up finding anything else on the site of Tsuki's workplace. However, once we got to Allie's place, we just kind of sat there in silence for a while. So, any ideas? The others jumped a bit. Fair enough, I guess, since it's been at least half an hour since anyone really said anything. Uh, ideas about what? Uh, the video's stupid, that weird cryptic arg freaking thing that was on my sister's computer. I wasn't able to get a good look at it, and besides, I think this is the part where we leave things up to the professional investigators. I looked at her frustratedly. I mean, okay, sure, but won't there be a higher chance of success if there's more people trying to crack it? I can't technically argue with that, but I'm still overwhelmed with this feeling to warning me not to get too far over my, in over my head. Not to let you two either. We could probably just go back to the investigators with what we found. No, in too far over our head till we take that route, right? I don't know. The witness protection exists for a reason. Yes, exactly my thinking. Thank you, Kotomi. I guess not. I'm still uneasy. But you do have a point. You saved the URL to that site, right? Yeah, shrinereport.xyz. Here, you can use my laptop. Probably a good idea to see it on the bigger screen than a phone. True. Kotomi passed me her laptop. I typed in the page link and the video popped up. We watched it again and tried to pay closer attention this time. Once the video was done, I handed Kotomi back her laptop and she put it on her desk. The way I see it, we're working with a few possible sets of information here. And those are... The shrine footage, the number of voice clips, and the sets of white and red pixels. Right. Personally, the number of voices and the pixel sets are what jump out to me as holding some kind of code. I'm not entirely sure what we can get out of the shrine footage though, since it seems to just be a loop. Well, in some cases, um, there's a way of embedding information in images that you... It's just called stenography or something, I don't remember. Hang on, I have an idea. It's possible they hid something for like one frame in the middle of it. Let me just... Kotomi opened a video editor up and set the playback speed really low so that it would show each frame for longer. We sat there for about five minutes watching it go. Eventually, Kotomi did catch something. Aha! Uh -huh. Not in the middle of it. There's this weird symbol that shows up for one frame right at the very end. She selected a specific frame and sure enough, a bizarre symbol was visible on screen. Oh, weird. What is that even supposed to be? Beats me. I'll make a quick sketch of it though. I took one of the papers out of the binder that was in my bag and scribbled down a quick drawing of the symbol. That's a good plan, Allison. Can you write down what numbers are being spoken in the voice sections? Yeah, sure. Can you replay them back? Oh, do you need a piece of paper? Here, use this one. I had it Alice in my paper and Kotomi replayed the video. Allison wrote down 16585027322 and 21140924. Two. 
Hang on, Ali. I noticed that there's like more of a break between some of the numbers in the second voice section. Can you put a little dash or something to indicate that? Oh, good cash. Here, Allison. Let me replay that for you. Got it. Allison added some cute little dashes, resulting in the paper now saying 21 apostrophe, 14 apostrophe, 09 apostrophe. 24. These could be coordinates or we could just be doing a A126 cipher again. A1 A1Z26. When does it end? So 16 f Oh no, it's probably this, I, I think those are coordinates. Not sure. So let's 165H50272 and 2114094. We've had them written out, but I'm not exactly sure what to do with them from here. Allison gave me a smug sort of grin. Really, Saturday? I would have thought you of all people would have figured at least one of these out. Isn't this kind of cryptic stuff right up your alley, conspiracy theorist? Hey, come here, break, Allie. I I'm not at peak mental efficiency right now. Fair enough. Anyway, look at the second set of numbers. The one with the dashes. Anything about them jump out to you? Hmm. Oh, I see what Allison's getting at. A1Z26, right? God, it never ends. Yep, pretty much. They're probably letters. Oh, oh God. Freaking, oh, duh. how the hell did I not... Don't sweat it. Anyways, let's just figure this out. So, transferring numbers into letters. Got it. Unix! The operating system? Yeah, Unix seems about right. Unix, so Unix time is early there? I mean, I can't really think of much else that the word Unix could mean. My bet would be that one of these codes from either the voice numbers or the pixel sets is a Unix time code. Well, since we haven't exactly figured out the pixel sets yet, Let's try seeing if the other number we got from the voice samples is a time code. Allison walked over to Konami's desk and opened the internet browser. She looked up one of those Unix to time code converters and typed 165850273 into it. And it sure is. 1212 12 AM on the 23rd of July this year. So two days ago. Ah, ha. Bingo! That's gotta be it. It's too close to our current time to not be what that number's getting at. So, did- So, obviously there's a reason why to provide time stamp at the top. It's for this purpose. So- Creepy laughter, but okay. It's clearly because there's, you know- to get that feel of mystery. Because I think like true crime documentaries do this or something, right? But this, I, f I think what this means is that Allison probably purposely, oh, not Allison, uh, Suki probably purposely like disappeared in order to, you know, deal with whatever was happening at that time. I'm inclined to agree, but having a time code doesn't really give us much to go off of. I, I mean, there's uh, still this other thing we haven't figured out yet. The sets of white and red pixels. I'm assuming it's probably going to be a location. And the reason why she disappeared is because she went to go to that location at that time. Yeah, can you pull those back up and pause the video on them? Oh yeah, here. I mean, okay, even this one I can almost figure out. Oh really? I'm actually more stumped on this one than the other. Do tell. My guess is that you count the numbers or something. I mean, look at it. It's just a set of different amount of pixels. So it'd probably be like 3126218. Hold on, though. What about the red line? Maybe it doesn't mean anything? No, it definitely means something. Look. Konami moves the playhead and the video editor forward a bunch to the second set of pixels. See, the red line is between some of them this time. I have a hard time believing it's just a red herring. I mean, it would be a red herring. Allison's going to destroy her. Allison let out one of the biggest sighs I've ever heard in my entire life. Saturday, that's a stretch, even for you, and you know it. 
Hey, I was mumbling that under my breath, so you couldn't hear it. Besides, it's not as bad as some of those rock puns. What if it's a zero? Hmm, what makes you think it's a zero? I mean, look at where it is in the first one. It's the first one in line. So maybe it's there to signify a zero so that we know the first digit is a zero. Look, if it wasn't there, you'd think it was three, one, two, six, two, one, eight, like you said. But maybe it's actually zero, three, one, two, six, two, one, eight. And they couldn't get that across if they just left it blank because you assume it started at three. Hey, well done. I think you're right. Look at you go. It's all elementary. Dear Saturday. That was not the invitation to make a Sherlock joke. Too bad. So applying this logic, we have zero three one two six two one eight from the first set. Cause we fast forward. Just put a marker down. Yeah. And then the second set would be one three zero nine one six five five. So zero three one two six two one eight and one three zero nine one six five five. Are these more Unix codes? Got it. They're way shorter. You can try anyways, though. Hold on. No need. I can say with confidence that they aren't. There'd be no reason for them to highlight the zero otherwise. They could just write three one two six two one eight. True, but if it's not that, then I'm drawing a blank. Hmm. Allison, you got an idea? Oh, it's a bit of a stretch, but if the other codes represented a place in time, could these be a place in physical space? Like some kind of coordinates? Yeah, the feeling I'm getting is that there's somehow latitude and longitude or something, but there's no decimal. Maybe we have to add it to ourselves. Look, the diagram comes up with the numbers and Kodami puts a decimal at the fourth character spot. If you do it like this, the reasoning for highlighting the zero becomes clear. See? Ah, I see it. So it's 31.26218 latitude and 130.91655 longitude or the other way around. Can't be the other way around. Latitude doesn't go as high as 130, so it has to be the first way. Go to me if you will. On it. Go to me looked over at her laptop and opened up Google Maps. Going with these coordinates gets us near the Okawachi Shrine on the main line. Okay, right. We need to tell Eri like this right away. This is a lead. You got a number, right? I think I wrote it down somewhere, but it'd probably be faster just to run to Suki's office than waiting for me to find it. Or you could just ask her sister, who's literally right here. That's a fair point. Let's go. We got up and left Allison's place. What? I ran into the geology museum at a breakneck pace that I didn't even know I was capable of achieving. Harry, big news! Harry jumps a bit. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Consider I just basically jump scared her. Whoa, whoa, calm down. What happened? We had the investigation. We looked at the video and we decoded it, and we're pretty sure that we have a lead. Harry puts the clipboard she's holding down on a nearby chair. All right, let's hear it. We think that she probably took a ferry to the mainland around five, maybe a bit before. There's a time code hidden in the video as for a place on the mainland at a specific time. So she probably wanted to be there at that time, I think. The route takes four and a half hours of just ferries, so it'd be a six or seven hour trip. It's obvious that if she took it, she was serious about whatever was happening here. She'd have missed a lot of her shift. Interesting. We are checking to see if she took a ferry. There's another officer dispatched there to check the details. Her bank has been less than cooperative, so we're checking to see on the station's end whether she was a passenger. They keep records of that stuff? Yeah, something to do with consent forms and boarding procedures. I don't think it's stored in a database or anything, but it was just a few days ago, so they shouldn't have filed away the physical record. I can't leave my position here currently, but if you head there yourselves, the officer should recognize Kodami. She is my sister after all. You could probably get the information you need there. Whoa, for real? Thanks! What do you guys think? I'll come, but after this, we're done. I'm leaving up to them, okay? Yeah, sure. I said that, but deep down. I knew I was just telling her that to avoid the hassle of arguing with her about it further. It's within walking distance, so let's get going. We left the geology museum once again and followed Kodami to the terminal.
hold, please. Yay. Saturday. Inquires about the fairy terminal about Tsuki. The fault called me into the fairy terminal. It's by no means a large venue. There were just a few benches scattered around for passengers to sit on while waiting. There was an officer standing at the check-in desk, talking to the ferryman. We're here, okay, right, officer. Kodomi walked up to the officer and I followed her. All that we have, you need to talk to another terminal to see if she went anywhere else. Understood. Thank you, sir. Your time is appreciated. Once the officer was done talking to the ferryman, he turned around and noticed us. Oh, hi. Nichibotsu's sister, right? And Nichibotsu's sister's uh, acquaintances? All right. This is Allison here, and this is... Hey, Mr. Officer, did you find anything about the Suki stuff? Uh, who are you exactly? Saturday, the missing girl's sister. Oh, in that case, I can indeed tell you that there was a Suki Tasogare who boarded a ferry to Kagoshima at 14 o'clock, and she did match what we know of her appearance. Wait, 14 o'clock? Is that 2 in the afternoon or 3? It, it's 2. The ferry docked safely at 18 o'clock, four hours later, and we have no reason to believe that she wasn't on it when it did. Great, thank you, sir. 18 o'clock? Why can't people just use normal people time? Well, you see, Saturday, in some countries, they go with the 24-hour clock. Some countries to go up to 12 hour clock. It really depends on what country you're in or what job you have. I walked away from the officer and to the desk to talk to the ferryman. He looked up from his newspaper when I got closer. What's the next ferry to Kagoshima department? You have two ferries running in tandem. You should depart around 6.30 if you don't mind waiting a bit. Sudden footsteps behind me indicated that Allison was running over to catch up with me. Saturday, you can't just go off to Kagoshima for this. It's not safe. Please, please, please. Just let the police handle it from here. I turned around and wait, raised my voice. Maybe it wasn't the best idea to do this, Allison, but I felt like letting up my emotions out would be better than holding back. I let my sister stay gone. Do nothing and let the, all this just happen. If they fail, she's gone, and I could have done something. It'll be my fault. I can't just do that. Not even try. If I at least try... So they'll be okay. Allison seemed conflicted on how to respond. This is a missing person. It looks like we're way in over our heads. The cipher is one thing, but it looks more and more like we're dealing with an organization with real power. We aren't a police force. We're just, just we're just students. What happens if we get hurt or worse? I don't care. I don't care. You can't understand what I'm going through right now. So who is the most important person in the world to be? And Calm yourself down, Saturday. Allison doesn't deserve this. She can't be gone. I'm not going to let it happen. But going in without even thinking of the consequences is going to... Before Allison could even finish her sentence. However, a deafening, booming sound interrupted the argument. The floor shook beneath us. Neither Allison nor I could speak due to shock. Konami rushed over to the window and looked out at the street. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. Allison ran up to... Allison and I ran up to Konami to see what was wrong. What is it? What's happening? Her workplace. The jolly place. It's... She didn't have time to finish before I noticed what was going on. The Tanakashima Geology Museum was entirely set ablaze, covered from top to bottom in horrifying embers. Oh, well, what are we waiting for? We need to make sure that everyone's okay. Come on. Yeah, what happened to Harry? I ran out of the ferry terminal and heard Allison shout behind me. Why is your first instinct to run towards the danger? Saturday? There was no time to worry about Allison's thoughts on the matter, and the sound of footsteps notified me that she and Kodobi were following me anyway. Now we just had to get there in time. We ran up to the site of the now flame geology museum. By the time we arrived, you could barely tell what the building even once was. Kodobi rushed up to the other detectives, and I followed her. What happened, dear? We smelled smoke and rushed everyone outside. It took maybe a Five minutes before the building was completely aflame. Is everyone okay? Where's my sister? She's she's still in there. She was the only one we couldn't get out and I looked over at Konami to see her wearing a, an expression I didn't think she was capable of. Pure and felt her terror. Konami, no, it's not safe. Please don't. I gritted my teeth and curled up my fist. 
She's already inside. Besides, I think she knows it's not safe. She's trying to save Ari. But why? That's dangerous, and she's normally really clear-headed about that stuff. Honestly, right now, I think Allison just doesn't understand what it's like to have a significant, like, a family member. A different, uh, like... I I'm guessing she's probably an only child. I guess she just cares a lot. I don't know. Does it really seem like now's the time for sitting around and thinking? Saturday, you have that look on your face. Please, don't do this. Shut up, shut up. Look at this situation. Look around you at the world, Allison. And stop trying to hold me back for once in your life, okay? I turned around so as to see Allison's reaction to my freak out. I was already running inside after Kotomi into the burning blaze. Saturday, Saturday. <laughs> I'm assuming this is about like 200. God! Finally, Saturday tries to save a friend. It says Terminal Prelude to the Cross. What does that mean? Cough, hack. God damn it, where is she? Where did Kodobi go? I ran through a world I could barely see myself screaming relentlessly in hopes it would yield some kind of result. Kodobi! Kodobi! At that moment, at that moment, a loud and panic voice cut through the non-stop embers around me. Ah, uh, Call to me. Hey, God, I'm coming. God, 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 freaking hurry. For frick's sake. One by one, I threw open doors around me. Through the flames on all sides, the doors often flung off their hitches without any effort at all. His room. No, no, not in there. No, maybe this one. No, not there. Not that one either. Co call to me. Call to me. Answer me. This time, however, nothing but crackling answered my desperate shouts. Call to me. For the love of God, please answer me. Get down. I know that running around desperately just hoping someone will answer my shouting isn't going to solve anything, but I... Please. Please. I collapsed to the floor as the burning reality around me creeped into my vision. Oh my god, oh my freaking god, oh, I, uh, that's just, uh, I'm, I'm going to die here. The, the fire around me is closing in fast. In these situations, shouldn't you be crawling on the floor in order to avoid the smoke? Holy shoot, I'm actually about to die. I don't want to, I, I don't, I, I'm not ready yet, I, oh, what the hell can I mess her up any more energy? Come on, come on, but please, please, someone come save me. Someone, someone come get me out of here, I'm sorry. Stop groveling on the floor and pick yourself up, dumbass. That's actually the best thing to do, though. Because the smoke rises. And it's actually the smoke that's the dangerous part, not the fire as much. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get wrapped up on all of this. I, Allison, I'm so sorry. Go to me, I'm so sorry. I, 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 I'm, I'm so, so scared. I, I'm not ready to die, please. I shouted that, but I couldn't even hear my own voice. I was surrounded by flames on all sides. There's no more left. There's nothing left. Heat. The intense heat from all angles. I'm not even on fire yet, and already the heat, the burning is, is undescribable. It hurts so much that I can't even scream. Any strength that I had gave way, and everything that I was fades along with it. What? The story paints had finished. Up down equals what? Okay, apparently I'm supposed to I'm supposed to fulfill these requirements on the side first. Which is chapter one finale times five. Yes, chapter one finale times five, five hundred. You know what? I'm too, I'm too lazy to actually properly solve these. So we're just going to consult the wiki page. And it says very, very clearly that the answer to this is just uniform zero, zero, I mean, uniform zero, eleven. Thank God. And now we go to the website. We're supposed to do this. Highlight stuff. And it says key code equals title. And we know what the title is. A word that I have no idea what it means. 
Actually, what does this mean? But enough about that. Let's go back to this. It was... Recrudescent. I should be concerned. Pyromaniac P. I'm scared. I should be. I'm just. I'm, I'm just hitting notes. I'm. I'm I can't be bothered. Clearly, like I should have just unlocked the, the the middle because I'm bad. At this. I'm dead. Yikes. It's okay. We'll play the easier one. <laughs> it's probably still stupid hard. It's fault. It's Power Maniac T. That T for too bad. Probably stands for somebody's. It's probably just stands like it's an initial or something. When... I think I would cry if it was pyromatic. In all honesty, I do kind of keep a list of mappers or charters or what you, whatever you want to call them and artists that you sometimes... If I see their names, I know I'm in for a pretty scary time. Not saying that I don't like their maps or their charts or their songs. Just saying that if I see their names, I know I'm in for a, a rough time. <laughs> Look, 500. That's cool. But 
They have no anime girls cutting in here. We live. We couldn't get an S plus. Aw. Because I'm bad at the game. But that's okay. Please tell me we get more story. I want to know. Despite the circumstances, everything feels cold. I feel like I'm falling endlessly through a space my brain could never begin to comprehend. And when I open my eyes, I can see something beautiful. Something that transcends what we can process with our human minds. An aurora of ideas, all intermingling with each other. Ideas of happiness, ideas of excitement, ideas of sorrow, and ideas of anger. In this space, there are no bodies or minds to interpret these ideas, only the space and the ideas themselves. And yet, just as I plunge further through this unknowable space, reality returns. Everything's hot again, and I feel my senses return to me. My body and mind reconnect as if to punish me for daring hope I could escape the suffering I would be due for within seconds. But reality pursues you until your very end. Right, I'm burning to death. And yet, as Inferno closes in around me, a figure comes into view, familiar yet forever alien to me. Humanity. Cool. I'm not able to muster up many words as before I started coughing violently again. Kotomi looked at me as if to say, Don't try to speak without actually seeing it herself. She extended her hand and I understood immediately. I helped her, I helped her pick up Aria and together we staggered towards the exit. Please just let us make it. Please, just let us. Please. The door is mere feet away. We stagger slowly with Aerie in our arms, but every slow step feels like an entire eternity. Inch by inch, the outside world comes closer and closer and I. My senses shut off and I feel myself falling. I hit the ground and recognize one thing before my consciousness finally cuts out entirely. Saturday. Saturday. The rough, jagged feel of the concrete pavement of a precinct parking lot. Yay! When I'm finally able to open my eyes again. I see a tiled ceiling. The Tanegashima General Hospital is in fact. Oh! A nurse entered the room, seemingly noticing that I'm awake. I tried to sit up but found that I'm still unable to move. Please don't try to strain yourself by getting up or speaking. Just stay lying down. I tried to say something regardless, but my voice escaped me. So it's not like I could disobey even if I wanted to. Instead, I looked at the nurse almost pleadingly, hoping I could convey a message in a nonverbal way. It's okay, I understand. You want to know what happened to your friends, right? I tried to nod, but I'm unable to do that either, so I blinked instead to try and imitate it. The nurse looked a bit confused, but I think she understood. Kodomi and Uri both passed out around the same time you did, according to your friend Allison. You three were all rushed over here by the other detectives that were present, and the building caught fire. They had to perform CPR on each of you first, but once your breathing was steadied, you are brought here immediately. My eyes relaxed at the knowledge that Kotomi and Eri were also resting here. They inhaled quite a bit more smoke than you did, so they're still unconscious, but they'll also be okay. I let a deep breath in relief. The good news is, none out of the three of you inhaled enough smoke that treatment goes any further than the oxygen we supplied you with while unconscious. Your body will still need some time to recover from being strained, however, so you likely won't be able to move too heavily for a bit still. And even when you will be able to move, it's probably best still not to, just so that you're not operating on bare minimum body energy. We don't have any nurses on call right now, so I have to go check on other patients, but please try and get some more rest. I'll be back, okay? Not like there's much of a way for me to respond. The nurse walked out the door and closed it behind her, leaving just me and my thoughts alone in this tiny hospital room. I should really try and learn what happened inside the building when they caught fire, and why Ariel was the only one trapped inside. And also inform Allison that I'm safe. She's probably worried sick. And also figure out what the next plan of action is for finding Suki. And... Just rest, dude. I was unable to finish my thought before I realized what the weird feeling in my eyes was. I'm crying. I'm assuming this is the one we just did. It's nearly midnight.
midnight and I've been given permission from the nurse to walk across the hall to Kodomi and Eri's room. I wanted to go knock on the door, but it was already slightly ajar, so I peeked my head in. Can I come in? Oh, you're the friend from the room across the hall. Yes, come in, but please don't strain yourself. Of course, thanks. The nurse left the room and I walked in and sat down. Are you two doing okay? Yeah, mostly. Eri took divorce of it in, so it took her a lot longer to regain consciousness. The nurses requested her to not speak much so as to not strain her lungs at all. Eri nodded. I can say very short sentences, though. Kotomi looked over at me. What about you, Sat? Are you all good? Aside from the fact that my body is still in an evidently weakened state, yeah, I'm fine. I didn't mention my emotional meltdown after the nurse left the room. Oh, thank goodness. It seems like we'll all be okay soon enough. It might just take Eri a little bit longer. Yeah, I'm glad everyone's going to be alright, even though this entire situation is just so unfortunate. Now that I look at them, I can definitely see a resemblance of sorts. I've known for a while that Kotomi dyed her hair a long time ago, but never really asked her about her original hair color. But I guess it would probably be brown or at least closer to Eri's natural hair color than otherwise. Kotomi, how come you never told me you two were sisters? You never asked. Oh, uh, what? Well, oh, I mean, no, okay, true, but in the half a decade I've known you, you never sought to mention it at all. I would have if you asked. I guess that's fair enough. We sat in silence for a while longer, probably close to 10 or 15 minutes, until Eri spoke up weakly. Now that both of you are here, I'd like to. Hey, don't, don't strain yourself, please. Take your time. Harry takes a few deep breaths in and out, then waits a minute before continuing. What happened that led to me being stuck in there? I understand, but how? You can barely speak, and I don't think I need to be the one to tell you that it's not a good idea to talk about all that while in this state. Just give her a laptop or, like, pen and paper. Harry takes out her phone and points to it. Give me your network ID. I'll add you to a group chat with, with, with Kozami. Okay, if, if you say so. My ID is just Saturn all orbit. No spaces, no capital letters. Harry takes a minute, and then I get a friend request and accept it. To confirm that both of you can see this, please look up at me and nod. Kotomi and I did as Harry requested. Alright, and both of you can reply, right? Ye. I can, yeah. Around 4.45 p.m., the rest of the posted investigators left their shifts to return to the precinct. I decided to stay behind and keep looking around, however. How come? I was afraid I was missing something. Something about Suki's office seemed different from the last time I was in there. Earlier that very same day. So I kept looking. Eventually, I did manage to figure out what seemed off to me. Was it a package? Of the little figurine statues she keeps on the shelf. On the left wall, we're all crowded together in one specific spot on the shelf. Aren't they usually, though? She has a lot of those, and that shelf isn't exactly the biggest. Well, yes, but they were arranged in a more crowded space than usual. It's almost unnerving how they were arranged in such a way that they would cover up something, but not be moved enough that it was easy to notice them being closer than usual. So, were they covering up something? A bomb. Yes, I moved them aside and found a small wooden box. Did you seriously crank it? Really? I tried to open it up, but it wouldn't budge. There was a little crank on the side, though. Uh-oh, I could tell where this is going. You'd think so, right? But I looked all across it, and there was no wire connecting it to anything. I scanned it with an emission sensor, too, and there's no signal or emission coming out of it or into it. Wait, hold on. Emission scanner? Oh, right. It's experimental tech being tested by investigators all across the world. It allows us to check objects for signals of all kind, like internet connections, that kind of stuff. Ah, I see. Go on. So I twisted the crank on the side and the box opened. There was barely any room to even store anything inside, but there was a tiny little speaker. Wait, hold on. I, I thought you just said your emission scanner didn't pick up literally anything. It didn't could have been faulty, or acting up, or for some reason or another, and didn't pick up the speaker inside. What happened next? 
So, the speaker turned on and started playing a little music box melody. I managed to get out my phone in time to record the last little bit of the melody. Let me upload it. Isn't this kind of dangerous? What if that song is what caused it to go kaboom? I re-uploaded the file to the group chat. Sure enough, it was a bizarre little music box melody. After that is where things get really bizarre. Once the melody ends, I hear sudden footsteps and the door locked behind me. So I spin around really fast. But the door is still just as open as it was when I entered. And there isn't anyone there. I went down into the hall to look around, but nothing was changed. None of the doors in the hall had been opened or closed anymore since I was there either. So I went back into Suki's room. When I got back, I noticed an image on Suki's monitor that wasn't even there when I left the room to check the hall. What was the image? From what I can recall, it was this rocking horse, it looked like. A tiny toy rocking horse. It was really distorted and hard to make out. Did you take a picture of it? I tried to. I went to pull out my phone again. And that's when it happened. The explosion? Yes, but before that, I heard another door slamming shut. And I jolted up from looking down at the monitor, and this time, the door to Suki's office was closed. I got up to run towards the door, and that's when the explosion went off, and the force blasted the door and knocked me back to the floor with it. After that, I barely remember anything. We were barely conscious when they came into the room and found you. I wouldn't be surprised if we were already unable to make sense of or remember your surroundings at that point. After Ari was done explaining, the three of us tried to think of possible explanations for what happened. But the reality of the matter was, there weren't nearly enough clues to go off of in order to figure out any kind of meaningful conjecture. After a while though, Ari jolted up a little bit. I just remembered something that I'm not sure how I forgot. What is it? Kodami, can you check the pockets of my jacket? I can't exactly move my arm super well currently. Uh, okay. Konami got up from her bed and ran her hand through Aerie's jacket. Eventually, she seemed surprised and pulled something small out. Wait, is that- Yes, it's the wooden box with the speaker in it. I completely forgot that I put it in my pocket when I went to go check the hallway. Theoretically, wouldn't, this, wouldn't it be better to just leave it in her jacket because uh, they could check for fingerprints? And uh, Aerie getting her- well, Aerie already has her fingerprints all over it. Um, Kotomi getting her fingerprints on them, I guess that, that kind of, I feel like that might not be as good. I don't know if you can actually get fingerprints off of a wooden box. Kotomi handed me the wooden box and went to lie back down on her bed. I took a good look at the box. It was even smaller than I thought it was from Aerie's description, being small enough that I could hold it flat in my palm. Just like Ari said, there was no way to open it other than the small metal crank on the side, and I wasn't about to take that risk. I was about to hand it back to Kotomi when I noticed something about the bottom. Hang on, is the bottom of this box, like, indented? What do you mean? Like, I can run my finger along it and it dips down at certain points. It's really hard to see because the indentation is extremely small. Hang on a minute. Ari, do you have an... Do you have a pen anywhere in your coat? I should. Feel free to check my pockets. I got up from my seat and walked over to Aerie's bed and searched her pockets. There's indeed a small pen in one of them. Okay, perfect. This will work. Let me see. I put the box top down on the desk between the two hospital beds and ran the tip of the pen through the small indented parts of the bottom face of the box. By the time I was done, there were clear letters written out. Couldn't you have done this easier with just if you just got like a piece of paper and like a pencil and you just ran the pencil on top of the paper on top of the box? What does this say? Second shrine.png? Yeah, looks like it. It's some kind of file name then? I don't think I need to explain what a PNG image is. Yeah, but I'm not sure what its usage is. We can't really get anything from just a file name, can we? The room went silent again. I sat down in the chair, and eventually the nurse came in. Hey, you three. Sorry, Saturday, but I need to run an oxygen test on these two, just to make sure everything's okay. Is it alright if I ask you to go back to your own room? The nurse is secretly a spy. She's gonna blow the hospital up while... She's gonna assassinate the two while she's gone. Yeah, not at all. Sorry, give me a second. I stood up slowly and walked to the door. 
We'll have time to figure out that weird file name thing once we're all healed up and better. Okay, Sat? Yeah, rest well, you two. I closed the door behind me and walked back to my own room across the hall. Like back in my bed, I realized I should probably talk to Allison, so I took out my phone to message her. Hey, Allie. Ah, uh, Saturday, you're okay. Lamau, hardly. I can barely get up and walk. I'll be okay, though. I'm rushing. Please don't put any stress on your body right now. I'm just glad you're okay. Don't put yourself back under stress. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, though, genuinely. Where are you right now? Wonder if you can pop over to the hospital to talk for a bit. I'm at home, but I can come out there. I'll just be a bit. It takes a while to go from one side of the island to another. She's gonna get assassinated. They're gonna- they're gonna throw like she's gonna get hit by a car. That's fine. I'm not going anywhere, lol. No! They're- they're raising flags. You saying that means you're gonna get kidnapped. Okay, I'll let you know when I'm coming over. Okay. God. I'm not sure how well she's going to take the decision I'm about to make, but I know it's what I need to do. What is 1B? It doesn't even have anything on it. It's just 1B. Oh. Saturday makes a decision about her future. Hey! Oh, oh, Saturday, you scared me. I had no idea you were there. Yeah, yeah, that's why I said hey. Now you know I'm here. Shh, that's true. Uh, anyway, why are you here? It's long past nine. Oh, you know how you're going with your parents to Tanagashima in a few months? Of course. I mean, I'm moving to an island. I, I uh, hope I would remember that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, there's a small but definitely possible chance that Tsuki's going to be moving out there for work next year, so... You know? Come on, you don't get it. I might move out with her to Tanagashima. As you can see, this is S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y. Saturday. Wait, wait, for real? Really? Well, that's, well, that seems kind of sudden, doesn't it? How so? I mean, I hadn't heard anything about this before. And you've known I'm going to be moving down south for months now. How come this is popping up now? Is this Allison? A-L-L-I-S-O-N. Maybe it might be. Well, two reasons. First off, I didn't introduce the idea to my parents until, like, really recently. I'm still not totally locked in. But, like, I can definitely convince them. And second off, I want to surprise you. We get to spend our high school years together. Isn't that really great? I mean, of course it is, but Saturday... What's up, Allie? You got that serious look in your eye. You're doing the thing. It's just... I'm not opposed to the idea. I just don't want you to, like, I guess... Adjust your entire life around me? You shouldn't have to follow me forever. Is that what you think? Huh? Allison, this isn't me making a choice I'm not 100% up for. It's something I feel like I need to do, but it's also something I want to do. If my path and yours end up separating down the line, then that's just life. I've made up my mind. The only thing left to be seen yet is where it leads me. I said those words then, too. I wonder, did I mean them in that same way? I can't help but feel that's when I start to realize those feelings. Hello? May I come in? I opened my eyes. Allison's at the hospital room's entrance. The nurse looked over and smiled. Of course, she's just resting now. Allison stepped inside the room and the nurse stepped out and closed the door. Despite the fact that this is the first time Allison has seen me since the incident at Suki's workplace, both of us just kind of sit in silence for a long time. Eventually, Allison broke the silence. I'm so sorry. I looked over, surprised. Uh, wh for what? You haven't done anything wrong. I mean, if I stopped you from going in, then you wouldn't... Then this wouldn't have happened. She gestured at the hospital bed and the oxygen monitor beside it. Hey, come on, Allie. Don't let yourself get trapped in that spiral now. It's not even remotely your fault, okay? If anything, I'm the one who should be apologizing. Hey. I was too stubborn, and I didn't listen to you when you were clearly just looking out for my safety. And that caused you so much worry, and... Allison walked over to the side of the bed and put her hand on mine. It's okay, Saturday, I promise. I'm sorry, I'm just really glad you're okay now. 
You can never tell due to the immense strength Allison has over her own voice, but even without looking at her, I could tell she was crying, at least a little bit. Eventually, she seemed to realize that she was still holding my hand and ran back to the chair on the other side of the room, embarrassingly. Have you been resting much? Not as much as I can, between them checking my O-levels and moving about. Okay, that's really good to hear, at least. Please continue to take it easy. Even once you get discharged, okay? Er, uh, yeah. I promise. I... I looked down, ashamed, knowing that what I was about to tell her was no better than flat out saying, No, I won't do that. Actually, I have something I need to tell you about that. Yeah. I could tell that immediately she was worried. Here goes nothing, I guess. I've, uh, decided that once I'm discharged and I've taken a few days to rest, I'm going to go to the mainland and try to find my sister myself. There was a short silence. I couldn't bring myself to look over at Allison, so I have no idea the expression she had on her face in that moment. Uh, uh There was another long silence where neither of us said anything. Suddenly, I felt something brush against my side and looked over to see Allison burying her head in my hand. Why? Why do you need to pee like this? For the first time since I'd known her, I could hear her sobbing through her words. Why do you feel like you need to be the hero? Like you need to throw yourself into danger over and over again. I don't- I don't understand, I- I'm- It's not that, I just- it's just- I know that you're scared for Suki, and I know that- and that you just don't want to show it in- Allison? I'm- I'm scared, Saturday. I'm so incredibly scared, both for her and you. Because I know you're just not being honest about how much this is tearing you up inside, and I don't think you're even being fully honest with yourself. Allison? You keep throwing yourself into reckless situations. I'm so mortified that you're going to get hurt or die or that or that. I, I don't know. I'm going to lose you in some way. I. Allie? Yeah? Yes? I'm not going anywhere. I promise that you're not going to lose me. But this is something that deep down I feel like I need to do. There's an answer waiting out there for me about all of this. I'm certain. I just need to find it. I understand that you're worried about me, and that the fact that I have someone who that cares about me that much in my life means so, so much to me. But I promise you, it's okay. I can look after myself. I look directly into Allison's eyes, her tears all over her face. I'm coming with you. I sat up, surprised. You're what? Listen, I don't like this idea. Nothing will make me like this idea, but the least you can do... Just let me come along as a second set of cautious eyes. It's just... I'm not opposed to the idea. I just don't want you to like... I guess... Adjust your entire life around me. You shouldn't have to follow me forever. Allison seemed surprised at what I said. Yet there was immense sadness behind her eyes. But I couldn't tell why. But then, she stood up. Saturday, this isn't me making a choice that I'm not 100% up for. If you feel like you need to go to the mainland, then I feel like I need to come with you. Because let me get one thing straight. This is not satisfying. This is not a conclusion. What do you mean? I don't follow. If you want to play the protagonist, then you're going to have to prove you can be. And that means accepting when things are out of your depth. So I'll ask you, do you really think that following this clue you found is what the universe is telling you to do? Was I really making the right choice? Was Allison right? Maybe I was getting too far beyond what I could handle. Maybe it would be better if I took a step back and let the professionals handle it. And yet, I am certain I still answered the way I did. You need to understand that to do this purely alone is a suicide mission. You need to... Be able to rely on others. To open up about how you're really feeling. Or before long, you'll find yourself burned up again. With nowhere left to run. Harsh? Maybe. But that's how life is. The Allison I saw before me was like nothing I'd ever seen from her before. And yet, I could tell that this was truly her and that all of this was purely from a place of genuine caring. I smiled. Then I settled, 
We travel together. Allison forced a smile. I could tell she was still worried. And to tell the truth, I was still worried too. Horrified even of what I might be getting myself into. But it felt like the path I'd chosen was the right one. Allison left the room smiling, but I still saw incredible sadness behind her grin. The reason for this still eluded me. And if I noticed it back then, the story may have turned out very differently. In the room across the hall, a detective and her sister rest and recover from a horrific brush with death. In the hall itself, a confused and conflicted young woman finds herself at a crossroads on how to feel, and far, far away across the sea, and below the grounds of a certain shrine. A large gate opens. A young adult woman walks into the atrium. To some, she can be known as Suki. In the center of the large open space sits a massive machine, rumbling and chugging along to its seeming never end. The woman approaches it. Another taller woman steps out from an unlit corner of the atrium. You see this well, then. I can't control this. The crosshatch in the tapestry, I assume. It would be rather hard to miss. Not to believe the cross patch itself with the threads that tie it together. I assume I don't have to spell it out for you. You're a smart one. I guess I can tell that it's Saturday's doing. What do you want me to say? I think about that actually. I instead I want the truth from you. I'd like to know whose name it is that you have taken and why. I'd like the truth this time. Hold. Wow. 
spot. The heck is this? I just wanted to know how to get to the second chapter. Apparently, we need more money. Begin chapter two next time because my hands are pained.